afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on the new Autodesk buying experience. As Lori mentioned, I'm Kim Valdez, Vice President of Sales Strategy and Operations. I have pulled together a team of resources that will help you understand the business process changes and how Imagine It is assisting and supporting our customers navigate through the changes. Now, Imagine It has worked side by side with Autodesk for about a year and a half to ensure our combined systems were integrated and we had the right people and processes in place to help our customers have a smooth transition and a positive experience. It's now going on about three months, maybe a little longer, since Autodesk began this new process change and there have been a lot of lessons learned along the way. And we have some best practices we'll share with you today, so let's get started. Our panelists and presenters today are as follows. Uh, Kayla Funk is our sales onboarding specialist. We have Dottie Townshen, who is our director of retention sales. Susan Lopez manages our customer advocacy department. Um, all will be presenters and panelists for the Q&A session today. So let's now jump to the agenda. First, Caleb will provide us with an overview of the Autodesk new buying experience. The reason behind the change, the benefits of these changes, followed by the workflow and process changes. He'll hand it back over to me and I'll go into some important details and nuances about the program changes. Then I will turn it over to Dottie, and Dottie will take us through the Imagine It resources along with the Autodesk and Imagine It communication timelines. She'll then hand it over to Susan, who will wrap it up with an overview of our customer advocacy team and the white glove services available to you as an Imagine It customer. And then finally, we'll all come back together. We'll get on and talk Q and A. Um, I've started us off with a few questions that um, have been reoccurring from our customers to get us started. And then of course, as Lori mentioned, you can enter any questions in the chat and then we will call out those questions and be happy to answer them for you. So with that, I will now turn it over to Caleb. Caleb, on to you. Perfect, thank you so much, Kim. So the first thing I wanna talk about is what this process change brings to our customers. And what this brings is a modern buying experience. It's more in line with what you're used to um, in a lot of other areas of your life in terms of ease of use, personalized experiences, and a guarantee of getting the best price available. So Autodesk and Imagine It working together, we recognize your time is important and we want to personalize your experience, deliver predictable pricing, and streamline the purchasing process with added control and convenience. So, those ideas, personalized, predictable, and streamlined, I wanna take a little closer look at, kind of go into each one. So the idea of the personalized experience is customers will now receive personalized purchase recommendations aligned with their preferences and needs. The reason this is now possible is historically, there have been many ways to purchase the software, resellers, distributors, directly from Autodesk, et cetera, and there wasn't a single location where all of this purchase history was gathered. Now, by looking at that purchase history and understanding the personas and industry trends around it, you may get now get more personalized suggestions on what would be useful within your company and solutions that would bring benefit to you and your company. The second area is the idea of pricing. So customers will now experience consistent pricing regardless of how they decide to procure. So this really smooths out the procurement process. It doesn't matter if you buy through an Imagine a quote or your Autodesk account, the price is gonna be at the same across the globe. And finally, that idea of the streamlined process, it's really about giving you more control for managing your subscriptions in your Autodesk account. An example of this would be giving administrators access to features such as the auto renew uh, feature that's available now and controlling when that occurs and how that occurs. So this is all what's coming to you. And then, you know, what are, I wanna talk about what's actually changed with the process. So if we take a look at this, we've got this new Autodesk transaction model. And it's really doesn't look that different than the old one if, if you stop to think about it. You're still going to work with Imagine It to begin laying out that solution and configuring the solution design, configuring the quote, determining what's necessary, whether it's in terms of just software, you know, it could be some extended things such as training as well, support, additional services that are part of that. 
But when it comes to the software side of things, imagine its systems are, are linked into Autodesk. And so what will happen is we will send the information, get it configured, the software quote goes to Autodesk, and then Autodesk sends a quote to you. Once you accept that quote, you pay Autodesk directly. And that's the change that we're seeing. Rather than paying Imagine it for the software, you're paying Autodesk, the person who's making the software directly for that. So this is kind of a high level. Let's take a look at this just a little bit deeper here. Okay. So kind of that first part is just what we were talking about before. You, you request a quote or you work with Imagine it to generate that quote. And our system is fully integrated with Autodesk's configure price quote tool. Um, if you ever bought flex tokens or worked with that, you might've seen something like that before, but our systems are integrated with that so that we can help design that quote for you. The quote, once it's configured, Autodesk will send you an email with the quote information. It's also gonna show up into your, uh, into your account, into your portal that you'll have with Autodesk. Once you've received the quote, you can then complete the order and you have instant product access. So that's kind of that convenience, that idea that we were talking about, you know, that's just so common that we have today. We, as soon as we place the order, we gain access. The same thing's gonna be true here. Of course, Imagine it is still available for any of those onboarding services, support services, all of those ongoing things that we have always been there for. Again, really the only difference is a business process change where you're paying Autodesk for the, Autodesk for the software and not Imagine it for the software. As so part of this change, some things have been set up. Um, Autodesk is automatically granting terms of net 30 uh, for uh, you're working with a PO. And you'll see with that, it's a $1,000 minimum and $100,000 maximum. So that's one of the things um, I wanted to mention in here. There, there's actually a lot of things going on behind the scenes with this, a lot of little nuances. And I'm going to turn it back to Kim to go through some of those different areas just to make sure we're all doing this correctly. Kim? Thanks, Caleb. Sorry, I had to turn off my mute. <laughs> All right, here's where we start to get into some of the important details and the nuances of these changes. I want to ensure that we are creating awareness to the changes that could potentially negatively impact you and your organization. After each software purchase, you are automatically enrolled in auto renew for the items listed on that transaction. Automatic billings for auto renew will be tied to the method of payment you selected at the time of your initial order. Example, you paid with a credit card on your initial transaction and auto renew is on. Your credit card will then get automatically billed at the end of your agreement term. You can, however, turn auto renew on and off as needed based on your company's policies and future needs. There are benefits to both, really. So if you plan to renew as is with the same payment terms and your company has no concerns with auto renewal agreements, then it might make sense. You know, this will ensure that there is never an interruption with your software access, provided payment is made and made in full on time. Now, if you're like Imagine It, as well as many of our customers who have told us that it's against their company policy to subscribe to any auto renew programs and that they want to maintain control over their purchase, reevaluate their needs, as well as the timing of their expenditures. As you know, being an, an Autodesk customer, there is a lot that goes into evaluating your purchase. And in some cases, you might have a subscription to a particular product that might have four different price points based on when your initial purchase was made. So, you know, this is what I tell customers is that until Autodesk pricing is normalized as a best practice, you know, we would suggest that you work with your Imagine It team to review your current and future needs each year. Now, having said this, if you do decide to turn off auto renew, you will be asked a few multiple choice questions on the reasons for doing so. You will also receive communications and notices like what I have on the screen here that 
might create some confusion. It's already created confusion for our customers. Autodesk has been tailoring these notices a bit based on our recommendations, but again, these notices are causing confusion. So I want to be clear that turning off auto renew is not canceling the transaction you just made. It's not can canceling you know, your future renewal. Additionally, it's not terminating any special pricing. And the only way for your subscription to be terminated or you forego any previous special pricing is if you did not renew on time or you are delinquent with payment, which I'll talk about in just a bit on the next slide. So again, if your company decides it's in the best interest to turn off auto renew, these notices, it's not going to terminate anything that you've already purchased and it's not going to terminate any special pricing. Any type of termination that happens will be to, due to a shutoff policy, which I'll now go into. Okay, so here's the second really important detail. Is, and again, there has been a lot of confusion on this topic. So it's key that you understand and you share the details of the Autodesk shutoff policy with other approvers within your organization, primary admins, procurement, and even accounts payable to avoid any costly disruptions. In the past, when you purchased your Autodesk software through the buy-sell model, we invoiced you directly, and there was no consequence in terms of software access for light payment. Under the new Autodesk buying experience, the shutoff policy is tied to your invoice date and or the expiration date. And then the timing varies based on how you paid for your subscription, whether that be prepaid or with terms. So let's say you have a renewal and you reach the expiry date of your subscription. You will continue to have access for the next 15 days and you can reinstate your subscription and maintain previous price locks. I'll talk more about the timing in a minute. But if you get to the suspended stage, you will lose access to your subscription but you can still regain access for the next 30 days. If that time goes by and you don't reinstate with full payment, you will be canceled and lose any previous price protection and will be required to purchase a new subscription to regain access. But like I said, this has caused some confusion for our customers. You know, this policy, can be confusing until you become familiar with it. And in every case, customer interactions and intentions have been good. However, not fully understanding roles within your company related to who's making the purchase and who's paying has caused confusion and disruptions for some of our customers. We get it. These changes may not mimic your, your company's procurement workflow, and this is why we need to work together to minimize any unintended consequences with this new program. I'm going to go into a few examples, all right? I'm not going to go into the entire timeline, but I'm going to cover this at a very high level, okay? So here's the first example. We have a prepay customer without terms. Customers without terms have a 15 day grace period after expiration or after their purchase, initial purchase. And then at day 16 and no payment has been made, the subscription will be suspended, which means you will no longer have access, but you will still have 30 more days of that particular subscription before it's canceled. So you have those 30 days to get it reinstated, pay for it in full, or is canceled. Now, prior to expiration, the purchaser and the primary admin will receive notices from Autodesk about their subscription expiring. Users will receive notices when they access their product that if the subscription is not paid for within however many days, they will lose access. Now, when Autodesk first told me about this, I was really concerned for our customers. I was really concerned thinking, well, what kind of confusion is this going to cause right within our organization? Now, what we've learned is, is that the users tend to ignore these types of pop-ups. 
And in fact, Dottie will tell a story about a customer that lost access and that particular customer users got the pop-ups, but they ignored it and did not create any awareness within the organization that there was an outstanding balance and that they were going to lose access before they were terminated. Now here is my second example of a customer timeline with terms. Notice that the timing is a bit different because the customer has terms of net 30. They have 30 days after expiration, then they move to the suspended state for 30 days. And then at 60 days, if customer still hasn't made final payment, the subscription will then be canceled. And when a subscription is canceled, all historical information is also terminated. This is a lot of information, a lot of information. And this is a new process and there's going to be hiccups. We found that what might seem like a minor blip can be quite costly and time consuming. Um, so Dottie is now going to share with you you know, how her team and the entire Imaginet team is available and able to assist you so we can minimize any potential disruptions. With that, I will turn that over to Dottie. Dottie, the floor is yours. Thanks, Kim. Good afternoon, everybody. As Kim mentioned, um, I'm responsible for our retention team here at Imaginet. And today I would like to share more about not just my team, but some of the other folks who assist in managing your account and imagine it. Now this approach that we have is not new. Um, however, I feel with the new buying experience, the team and environment that we offer will bring additional value to our relationship that you may not see on the surface. And as Kim mentioned, I have a story that I can share with you in a minute. And it's an example of how we helped a customer with, as what I heard Kim say earlier, an unintended consequence on a transaction through the Autodesk portal. Now, what we have here is a snapshot of various teams within Imagine It that may work with you. These teams are well-rounded specialists to help you from buying new Autodesk subscription to right-sizing your license environment, and advising you on your subscription renewals, plus more, aligning other solutions we offer with your desired business outcomes. This model provides customers with a team-based approach to account management. And it also allows you and members of your company the ability to foster relationships with multiple imaginative stakeholders to fully support your business and needs. Now let's just touch on some of these personas real quick. So in the middle, we have your account executive. And I think of this person as your quarterback. They are the one managing your account and introducing imaginative resources based on your requirements and your business and your goals and initiatives. Our customer success team is here to develop business plans that provide you with measurable outcome tracking. Executive sponsorship is a critical element in the successful execution of projects, your initiatives, strategies inside the organization. My team, your designated retention specialist, is important when we contribute to the relationship as it relates to your Autodesk renewal. Technical account management is a specialized role within customer service and client relationship management. And these folks are your industry technical liaisons inside of Imagine It. Our customer advocacy team provides complimentary assistance to your company with things like subscription, assignment to users, usage reporting, and much more. And Susan's gonna talk about some of the other things that they do in a few minutes. And then lastly, our industry technical experts we have a dedicated team whose primary responsibility is keep your users billable and they'll handle all your technical troubleshooting issues. So it's a lot of information to summarize, but imagine it knows your business isn't cookie cutter and we don't really manage it that way. Our team approach to account management sets us apart and provides our customers with a group of experts to assist your business. 
So on the next slide, let's move into some details that are related to the new buying experience. So as Caleb mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, our role as your business partner, better known as your reseller, has not changed. However, the way you buy has. And that's why we feel it's important to help you understand there are new things to consider when purchasing Autodesk products. Things like, how does your company buy? Who needs to be involved? How do you pay Autodesk? If you don't have payment on time, what are the consequences? What do you do if you miss your expiration date? What happens if you get shut off? Does my company allow me to turn on auto renew? So the message here is let us be your navigator. So I wanna take a look at the process from a 50,000 foot view. First, you're gonna get a lot of communication. You probably already noticed that. The person in your company, that key person, the primary admin for your Autodesk assets, they're gonna receive communications from Imaginate Marketing, communications from our team, the Imaginate Retention Specialist, as well as Autodesk Automated Communications. So my focus here is on renewals, but this process change, to be clear, affects new subscriptions as well as the purchase of flex tokens. Now, for a renewal, Autodesk starts their automated emails, communications at 89 days before your subscription end date. And those communications will include links to buy through the portal. And although it seems easy to kind of just click, buy, and move on to another task, there are considerable process changes to consider. So like after the, over the past few months, our experience has told us that even if you have a simple new seed or renewal transaction, somebody sometimes it's just not simple, right? There have been detours in the process. And that's why I believe like allowing us to offer our expertise to guide you is really important. This new buying experience through Autodesk is a portal versus buying from a live person. The Autodesk portal is configuring a quote based on data available not necessarily the conversation you may have had with your account manager. Now my story, we had a customer where there was a new person that took over the responsibilities of managing Autodesk assets for a company. And there was a little, <clears throat> excuse me, internal communication breakdown. And we know we all have them, right? But they needed to change some products before the renewal because of a new project requirement. And unfortunately, this information did trickle down to the new contract manager. So innocently, the person wanted to get the renewal off their plate, do a good job, and process the renewal through the portal. Of course, after the fact, the contract manager learned that they needed to change the products. So a return process was started. Well, one thing we've learned under this new buying experience is you cannot return some of the products on the order. The entire order needed to be canceled. So it turns out that this process went a lot longer than expected, past the end date of the subscription, past the grace period, users came into work one day and they could not access their products. So you can imagine the disruption to the business, right? So this customer in the end, you know, learned that there was a, an interruption to their software, downtime, frustration, and the point I'd like to make that ultimately they understood that the value of our team because they reached out to imagine it. You know, we called in our lifelines and got them reinstated much faster than expected. So let us help you. Don't be tempted by the easy button and all the little detail, the detours as we call them to buy. Our systems are integrated and my team's prescribed cadence is to provide you with an Autodesk quote based on conversations that we have with you well in advance of your subscription end date. We allow considerable time to discuss the software products, software term options, and when I say term in this context, I'm talking about the length of time you subscribe, and make sure that you're maximizing your investment through legacy pricing that you may have like M2S. Your Imaginate Retention Specialist will tee up a quote directly from our system and send it to Autodesk. 
and that's where the pricing will be finalized. The quote comes to you, the customer, via email from no reply at autodeskcommunications.com. And inside that email, there will be a quote that's previewed as well as an attached PDF. And when you open that quote, you will have the ability to review the line items and transact or buy right from inside the quote that Imagine it created for you. And we will hold your hand. My team has been doing lots of screenshots with customers walking them through this every step. And there have been some snags. And the good thing about being on the phone with them is we've been able to just jump in and address those right as they happen and get a resolution underway. So on the next slide, I'm going to wrap up with a little bit deeper dive for uh, my team and then I'll turn this over to Susan. So again, to reiterate, the Imagine Retention Specialist, their primary focus is handling Autodesk renewals for customers like you. So each customer has a designated retention specialist assigned to their account. And a retention specialist is going to be focusing on the Autodesk subscription and is going to provide you with the best renewal options available based on conversations that you have with them and your account manager on the assets at the time of the renewal. So to help you understand the process in a little bit greater detail, we're going to initiate conversations with you around 120 days before the subscriptions are due to expire. And that is before your first Autodesk automated communication. So our job is to reach out to you, have a conversation, educate you on the best renewal options available based on what you need, right? Talk to you about other things like streamlining your subscription renewal. That could be by aligning end dates, for example. Switching terms to lock in pricing. And I'll take this opportunity as a side note to share with you that, and some people may know this, some may not, that now you can subscribe for a three-year term and you no longer have to pay that all up front. Autodesk will lock in your price at pricing for three years and you will pay them through annual billings. All right, so now going back to the process. So once you're in that 90-day renewal window <clears throat> with Autodesk where you can place the order, the renewal specialist will prepare a quote <clears throat> for your dedicated contact, like I said, based on what we discussed, and that quote will be sent to you in an email from that Autodesk no reply at autodeskcommunications.com where you can buy. Now, each quote that we initiate through our systems is valid for 30 days. And this is a change too. Before we would prepare a quote and it did have an expiration date, but the quote didn't go away. But now in this new environment, your quote does expire. And once it's expired, you can't buy from it. So a new quote needs to be prepared and the process starts again. So understanding the timeline of your purchase is very important. Our team will also seek to understand your procurement process. Again, the buying timeframe and to make sure that we're aligning your process as best as we can with the Autodesk process. We really want you to have a seamless and trouble-free experience. So don't worry, we do have a developed cadence that we like to follow. It's gonna walk you through this process from the beginning to the end. And we really just want to ensure that your timely, that your renewal is processed on time. There's no disruption to your subscriptions. And you know, we can be there to intervene if we need to, right? So that's what I'm gonna wrap up today. I'm gonna to turn this now over to Susan Lopez. She is the manager of our customer advocacy team, and she's gonna go into more detail on how her team contributes to the relationship. Thanks, Dottie. So I know you've heard I know you've heard some things today that may sound a little confusing. I want you to know my team has been on the front line providing white glove treatment to many of our customers just like you, walking them through this new buying experience from vendor setup to the license management. Through the process, we have learned a lot of lessons and have built relationships at Autodesk 
giving us quick access to the resources needed to break down any of the roadblocks that may occur. Your dedicated customer advocate is available to walk you through the buying experience, as well as doing a screen share to make sure it's a smooth transaction. As Kim mentioned, we have been working with Autodesk new buying experience development team, and I've been part of the planning process. So we have a direct line to a team at Autodesk dedicated to addressing any hiccups that may occur pre-purchase, post-purchase, and everything in between. Look, we know that y'all wear many hats and um, manage many platforms other than the Autodesk um, solutions. And your dedicated customer advocate is a great resource, not only for the buying experience, but also with day-to-day -day license management support. You can think of your customer advocate as your personal admin assistant. They're there to help you with managing and accessing your Autodesk licenses, organizing your users and software in a way that makes sense for you and your company. My team takes great pride in the partnerships they've built with our customers by increasing the productivity and efficiency. Your customer advocate works in lockstep with your Autodesk executive, I mean with your account executive, imagine an account executive, to make sure we stay in alignment with your desired outcomes and targets by providing in-depth insights into your software usage, allowing us to provide solution optimization. One of the ways we do this is with your usage reporting. As secondary admins, Imagine it will provide a fully customizable report that allows us to take a deep dive into who is utilizing the many solutions available to you giving you more control of your solutions, budget, and growth. We conduct business reviews and pre-purchase reviews for additional software, as well as usage reviews on a regular cadence, so we can determine the best strategy to maximize on the solutions you have and need. This data provides insights into how the software is being used, how often and by who, to identify strengths and weaknesses and efficiencies and productivity. The report includes user usage of all of your offerings and products. It identifies inactive users and underutilized solutions, it provides a cost analysis, which is great at renewal time, and recommendations of maximizing on those solutions. We can also identify areas of retention of talent, which we know is a very big concern for a lot of companies right now. And this is where we can help upskill your designers and engineers for increased prof prof proficiency and growth within the company. In addition, we monitor your account usage through the life of your subscriptions and work with your Imaginet account executive to make the necessary recommendations to ensure you are making the most out of all of your solutions, making changes in the license and user assignments as needed. Our team of dedicated customer advocates Advocates has effectively saved our clients hundreds of hours in assessing this data, as well as saving them thousands and in some cases millions of dollars by optimizing their solutions. So let us help you through the Autodesk buying process and assisting you with all of your license management needs. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kim to wrap things up. Excellent. Thanks so much, Susan. So on this last slide here, I've got a couple resources. So on our Imagine It website, there is the resource page that has an FAQ on the new Autodesk buying experience as well as, well as a waterfall FAQ. In addition, if you need a quick question answered, you can always reach out to your Imagine It account executive who manages your account, or you can send an email to customeradvocacy at rand.com or if you know who your dedicated retention specialist is, you can reach out to them directly, or frankly, you can reach out to any of the panelists on today's call as well. So I said we would all be available, all of the presenters and panelists for today to answer questions. And um, I'm gonna get us started with three reoccurring questions that we've been receiving from our customers. The first is, is how do I establish terms with Autodesk? Now, Caleb touched base on this and he said that you know, all customers are automatically granted terms. 
a minimum purchase amount of 1,000 and a maximum purchase amount of 100,000. Now, there's a, a couple things with this that you should know. There is a little bit of kind of hokey stuff that seems to happen here. Um, and Susan's team has been incredible at getting these resolved very quickly. But what we've been noticing is that every now and then when a customer goes to transact, um, it's told that they've either exceeded the purchase limit or there's an outstanding balance somewhere. Um, and both of those are plausible. You really could have both of those situations have happened. So it's possible that someone within your organization has gone to the Autodesk e-store, has made a transaction, and did not pay for their bill and pay for it on time. When something like that happens, then there's a whole domino effect for anyone else that wants to purchase, okay? The best thing that you can do if you try to purchase a transaction and you're getting some type of error message or being told you, you cannot, you've exceeded your terms or there's outstanding balance or whatever, is to reach out to either the customer advocacy team or reach out to your account executive. We have created an escalation path to get those resolved very quickly. Now, there was something I said there that you guys and gals should pick up on is anyone that has an Autodesk account within your organization can transact. That's something to be aware of because you're gonna want some type of controlled purchasing now that there's this Autodesk shutoff policy and also because it can affect your terms. So let's go to question number two. Can I get extended terms? Well, this is a tough question. As much as I would love to say yes, the answer really is a hard no. Um, exceptions are um, an exception, it's not the rule. And Autodesk, in fact, has had all of their partners and their employees. We've all gone through extensive training on this topic. You know, Autodesk terms and conditions are industry standards. So their terms of net 30, as well as their T's and C's, is all considered industry standard. So there was very little room for any type of extended terms. Now, you know, there might be an exception if there is a significant purchase or there's, um, you know, an extreme, you know, reason, um, but there is a whole, you know, team that at Autodesk that has to review those. Um, a lot of times we'll get no's with that team before we can even escalate it to the next level. So the one thing I would say here is that I know this doesn't conform to people's purchasing and procurement processes. We've got to have dialogues and conversations around that um, to see how we can help you with some workarounds. But the standard terms is net 30. What's the difference, question number three, what's the difference between the purchaser and the payer? So for this question, I'm going to turn it over to Susan Lopez. Susan? So the difference between the purchaser and the payer, this gets very confusing. I like to say, really, the purchaser is, going to, is just another name for a contract manager. You're just pressing the button that says buy. You're not responsible for the payment on it. You're not responsible for um, how it's going to be paid. All you're doing is purchasing the licenses that you requested. In other words, today, if you need something, just like Caleb had mentioned, you go to your Imaginate um, account manager, you ask them for a quote, you need an appro approval on that quote, so you send it over to your pro procurement department, they approve it, they generate a PO, they give it to you, and then you hand that over to your Imaginate rep for them to go ahead and put in an order. Instead, what you're going to do is there is a field that you can put that PO in, that PO number in. There's also a field in the order process where you can designate the payer, whoever is going to get the invoice and actually pay it. Um, the reason why they have these two different roles is so that your payer, the person that's paying for it, isn't going to get all of the, um, you know, uh, promo emails that you get from that the, that the um, contract manager needs. Um, instead, the purchaser is going to get that. Okay. All the payer is going to get is the invoice and any notifications having to do with payment. The purchaser is still going to be able to assign the licenses, 
They're going to have access to those licenses right away. So that's the difference between the two. Um, the other reason why you want the purchaser to um, be designated as a purchaser is because once you put in that order, you immediately can assign the licenses to a team and start assigning them. If you are not, if the purchaser is not the contract manager, if we don't have that person designated, then you won't be able to see those licenses right away. So it's very important that you have this discussion with your account manager or your customer advocate at the time that you're getting ready to order so that we can make sure that the right person is putting in the order and the right person is going to be getting the invoice. Then that way we don't have to worry about any confusion as to the invoice getting to the right place and getting paid on time and worrying about that shut off. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Susan. I just want to add one thing in here. So Susan mentioned contract manager. So, so contracts go away. Um, it's all about subscription start dates and end dates. Um, the previously called, you know, contract manager is now really the, you know, primary admin or purchaser. So I just want to kind of make sure that everybody is aware of the new terminology as well. So, Lori, I'm going to turn to you. Uh, do we have any questions that have come in through the chat? So thank you, Kim, Caleb, Dottie, and Susan. Thank you so much for your time today. It was a very important topic and very well attended. So with that, thank you everyone for attending and have a great day, everyone.